real quick. This is my alt channel, and my main channel is in danger every day of getting banned as a result of talking with these amazing people very candidly. So please do me a favor and subscribe down below. Helps me out a lot. Get the hell on it, dog on it. I saw a video you made recently, and I started think I've been thinking about this. And sometimes I'll think about a thing, and then you'll release a video, and it's the weirdest thing. I'll be like, what the fuck? Is <laughs> and it's about Hollywood waking up to this idea that pandering uh politically or pandering uh whether it be esg dei all that stuff is starting to be just not i mean it's i guess it's not starting to be but it's starting to hit you know the actual p l or bank accounts for some of these studios and some of these people and they're realizing that this stuff is getting a little bit insane and it kind of reflected in the oscars where the oscars was really safe um who we expected and thought should win the Oscars were winning the Oscars. I mean, uh, Oppenheimer uh, freaking took it home. Oh, yeah. it, was a, it was a great film. I loved it. Um, and then, of course, Godzilla. And I knew Godzilla was going to have to get best visuals, right? I mean, it's Godzilla. Beautiful film. Um, so what's, what's your take? Do you see like a, a tide finally turning in Hollywood? I do actually, yeah. I mean, and I've said this for a long time. You know, the when the money eventually runs out, they're going to have no option but to to adjust because you can't keep making movies, you can't keep an out, you can't keep putting out product if you've got no money left in the bank. Yeah, uh, and so they were going to have to do something. And I think this is the year um, where we've really seen it kick in. And the Oscars has always been a reflection of how Hollywood sees itself. It's always a reflection of um, what it values, where it's heading, um, how much confidence it has in itself um <clears throat> and you really saw it in previous years where it's very bombastic very um a huge event loads of money everything uh loads of political posturing because yeah. they really believe that they set the tone for what the country needs you know they were going to tell you what you should believe and this year it was a complete about face it was uh an industry that looked like it had been humbled that was the best way i could put it very low key comparatively to what we've had previously. Uh, very safe. Uh, the movie choices were all very safe. The winners were all very safe, um, very sensible. Not that there's anything wrong with that in this case, because yeah. it was a pretty worthy movie that won it. It was great to see Barbie get fuck all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and even the the monologues and the the jokes and stuff, they were all very um, non political, low key, uh, tame. Man, it just felt like the whole evening, like they'd been told, don't be controversial, do not rile up people, do not put all that political garbage in there. Uh, and they didn't do it. I mean, great. It's the right thing to do, I think. It's just uh, an interesting sign of, I guess, where this industry is going and um, the complete lack of confidence now that it's got in itself. It knows it's in trouble. It knows that it's been uh, torn apart by strike action all throughout last year, it knows that it's had a series of massive flops. It knows that some of the big studios are in massive trouble. Um, and they're afraid. For the first time, I think they're genuinely afraid uh, of what the future holds. And they probably should be because this is a disaster of their own making for the most part. Yeah. Do you think uh, do you think you're going to see? Because I think um, I've been I still see, you know, every now and then, probably a few months ago, that studios were announcing film projects and it was like led by random Asian lady that had like one writing credit on a short in 2014 and they're still moving forward with these projects in some cases. Do you think we're going to see a lot of those get delayed indefinitely? Well, Disney are still doing it because man, they just live for that shit. They yeah. cannot get enough of it. And it seems like it's so entrenched into the fabric of their, their studio, their company. Now uh, they can't separate themselves from it. <clears throat> Excuse me anymore. Other studios like Warner brothers, uh, and probably Sony have gotten a lot more realistic about it because their money is running out a lot faster. And so they have become a lot more ruthless and they have killed a lot of these projects and they're probably going to kill more of them going forwards. And rightly so. I mean, there's nothing bad about hiring, you know, new talent and giving other opp opportunities to other people. That's all good, but you've got to give them the chance to build themselves up first. So they've got the experience to take on projects like this. You can't take a little indie director who's worked on sub-million dollar movies and put them in charge of a two $250 million blockbuster superhero movie. You can't do it. They can't direct something like that because they've never done it before. Uh, so inevitably, they're going to fail. And 
damn man i heard i heard some wicked behind the scenes stories about madam web <laughs> like, oh, just, i can't even imagine everyone working on that fucking movie hated it uh they knew it was going to be a failure while they were making it and they had no choice they were locked in contractually they had to go through with it but like the the morale on set was through the floor the atmosphere was dead like they just did not want to be there <laughs> it's hilarious in retrospect yeah <laughs> yeah i just liked how the the women showed up um to the premiere now it's, 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 yeah. i was like it 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 brings me back to this weird thing and the same thing with uh, zendaya she did the same thing randomly where she had the assless chap robot thing and i'm thinking to myself you have all these women and all these studios and all these pr people and they're like you know always pushing this narrative that oh we shouldn't like we shouldn't sexualize women and they're being objectified and then they it like by their own choice show up to a reward show with like a string bikini on that has like one spaghetti straw like over their like yeah nipples. and i'm like what wait you show up to this looking like this with your fat ass titties out and i'm over like this is the greatest thing i just want them facing them but it fucking really. works though doesn't it because yeah. like now yeah. you know compare this to like when captain marvel came out or whatever um you know, and everyone was hating on Brie Larson. Everyone's hating on Rachel Zegler. These girls knew what the problem was. They knew the movie was shit. How can we save ourselves from this? We're going to show up wearing as little as possible and just fall back on the oldest backup plan in history, tits. Yes. Uh, and, and it worked. And now <laughs> they made fun of their own movie. They've come out of this great. Like, I don't think anyone's got any ill will towards Sydney Sweeney or Dakota Johnson or anything like that because they just understood what the problem was and just bailed the fuck out. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. But yeah, it's an interesting paradox, isn't it? Where you're told that you, you can't sexualize women anymore. You've got to avoid the male gaze unless it's profitable towards the actresses and then it's just fine, you know? Yeah, so, all I see. Okay, okay so... If this was, let's say that what happened with Brie Larson, for example. So Brie Larson does uh, Marvel and um, Miss Marvel or whatever, and everybody hated her. And she was going on this tour where she was like defending herself over overtly, and everybody hated her for a long period of time. And then she showed up randomly, like two years, three years later, and she just had her like she had this black thing on and her tits out, and everybody who liked they just liked Brie Larson again. They're like, oh look. This is great. And um, then she said that thing about Johnny Depp where she didn't she didn't overtly attack him when somebody at basically tried to get her to attack him through a question at some you know meeting. And um, everybody was like, oh, well, I really like Brie Larson now. And all I hear about this Sweeney lady is that she has giant tits and she's all she's beautiful. I don't even I didn't even know. What more do you need to know? Tits. You know, <laughs> yeah. no, look, dude, if you, you know, as well as I know that if you had giant female titties and you had a, you, you were a hot blonde woman oh yeah you got to make you, most of it while you can you know right now that your book sales and your public appearances and stuff would be times 10 i think well, about you know it's time. like how many fucking video thumbnails has she appeared in yeah which are totally irrelevant to whatever the video is about it's just like clickbait they know it works oh, i think so jeremy from geeks and gamers said i'm just gonna put her on every thumbnail even if she's irrelevant to what i'm talking about i'm just Dude, gonna put her there for fun my next video <laughs> My next video, shockingly, is about GameStop. I haven't released one in forever, so I released one recently. I'm, it's just going to be a cashier. I'm going to put a hat on her and a little name tag and just her tits out. And it's just going to be old Sweeney. And <laughs> it's just Dude, I tell you, though, the, the biggest sin of Madam Web was putting her into like some weird blouse thing where, like, I don't know if they, they strapped her tits down or something to make them look smaller, but like you would never know what was lurking under there. And I thought, <laughs> why? Why would you not make use of them for your movie? If she was yeah. wearing like the kind of outfit she wore to the premiere, they they would have made three or four times what they made from that movie. People yeah. would have just gone to see her because she's hot. Like sex sells. It's always sold. We know it does. Yeah. Every every marketing guy since the dawn of marketing has known this as well. I don't know why Hollywood's so determined to avoid it. <laughs> yeah. So um, a very, very good example of this is Kate Winslet in Titanic. I guarantee you about $250 million of that overall like box office results came from her just getting completely butt ass and getting on the couch. Yeah. I was because I I would have went and saw I was nine years old, okay. I couldn't really just go see it again. But I tell you what, when I was nine years old, it was it's a core memory. And every time I go see it, every time there's a 25th, a 20th, or a 15th year anniversary, I go see that shit and I'm at. <laughs> oh, you're right, man. I approve. <laughs> Dude, it's uh, I love this. I, to be fair, I love Titanic. I don't I know it's got weirdly 
it's got like stage acting kind of like over the top acting I, I, yeah you know what i think there's this temptation to shit on it because it's like a love story but yeah. if you kind of just move past the love story and just look at it as a disaster movie it's fantastic like i love watching that ship sink yeah. and like all the them splits in half and things yeah. like it's cool man and then it's, it's like awesome. that freaking ost is like this over the top bah, bah, bah. yeah it's, like, oh, it's awesome it's yeah. epic destruction what more can you ask for yeah it's like the end of the world except it's the titanic which it was the end of the world for like two thousand people man. so yeah. <laughs> 